let's talk about it. Let's talk about divesting. What the hell is it? I don't, I didn't know much about it. And then I started researching. So I want to talk about what it is. And please, if anybody in the community that is a divester, you c- come on up. I'm I'm not going I'm not going to hurt you. This is a safe space. Okay? Safe here. I'm going to put up something. And there was a video that I saw and it was recorded at I want to say maybe last year, and it's a whole community of women that divest. First, before I do that, I want to put up the definition just in case no one knows what it is. Um, uh, like I said, I'm big on words, so we're gonna use it. Let's let's use it right. So divest is sort of a fancy way to say dispose of. It's often used in a business context to describe companies or government that divest some of their holdings by selling them off. It can also be used in the sense of taking something away from someone. For example, if your boss becomes insane and power mad, his handlers may divest him of his title. So dispose him of his title, meaning his position is taken away from him. So being a divester, what does that mean when we're talking about relationships and what these women are talking about? They're disposing of the black man. That's it. So let's hear what they have to say. This was an interesting stream, Um, very interesting. So let me share my screen. Get you in here, sister. Um, Life has really encapsulated all of it, honestly. Um, but to paraphrase, it think of the decision that you're going to make and does it serve you best, right? So a lot of the times that means that you might have to abstain from Blackistan, even politics, politics that don't serve you, politics that are not your own narrative, a workplace that's not serving you, um men who are not serving you be it black be it white men who overly identify with the black male plight people in proximity you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking yeah, about you know and you saying that just yeah because i'm so glad this, you got to hear because <laughs> it was trans too um divesting from um i've even had to divest from some who were black male sympathizers, right? Um, Thinking about where you're gonna spend your time because you as a woman, whatever you spend your time with, it's gonna multiply. That is the nature of feminine energy, right? So if you pair bond with dust, what are you gonna get? Dust, right? And also, So I hope you guys were able to hear. So pretty much what they were saying, what does it mean to divest? It's, you know, whatever doesn't serve me, me. I'm doing me first. Me, 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 me. So first it tells me you're selfish. And I don't know who any man that would want to be in a relationship with a, a selfish woman. But what she said, what I thought was interesting is that she's not only divesting from black men, meaning disposing of black men. She doesn't need a black man in her life, don't want to date him. And that's fine. Because I mean, it's going to be more for me. But 
Okay. But what she also said that I think is interesting is that she's even divesting from the white men that relate to blackness. She don't want a white man that might be culturally aware of of, of black folks. So that means John B can't even holler at her. Now, if y'all don't know me, that's one thing that you should know. I love y'all black men, but um, if John B walk in here talking about they don't know, I'm gonna tell y'all, I don't know y'all gotta go. But other than that, you don't even want a white man that's sympathetic. And she also said black male sympathizers, which I guess they would consider me one because I love black men. Well, I love black people. So black people, black men, all of us. So they don't even want to be around women like me that don't hate anything about the black men. Yeah, y'all got y'all problems, but we do too. But that doesn't mean I turn away. It means I try to solve it with you. So the divestment is not only selfish that I'm getting. And again, if I'm getting it wrong, please, I'm going to drop the link. You said someone, well, that's right, John B. Okay. But I'm going to drop the link. And maybe if I'm getting it wrong, you let me know. But they don't want nothing to do with the Black community. Even though these are four Black women, they want nothing to do with us. So that tells me that it, ha- it it's, it's not the black man, it's them. You just don't want nothing to do with your whole culture. I'm gonna go back. Let's bring these ladies back up. I hope y'all can hear cause this was in- interesting. Um, they also said some stuff on here. What do they think? about the black man. Let's hear it. And everything. She like, he and all glowy and everything. Yep, you're all here. <laughs> oh, nice. All right, so you guys can open your mics up. And I want to know what you think about this statement. I don't even know where I found it. How true is the statement, quote, Black women's poor outcomes are almost exclusively tied to our unending support of and loyalty to black males, often at our detriment. Mm -hmm. I agree. (laughs) True. Yes, I agree. Yeah, that's true. And it's so. Yeah, so support of and loyalty to black males, often at our detriment, the part that got me. Yes. Yeah, can I attest to that, to what you're saying, Deb? Go ahead, girl. Okay, <laughs> good. So if, if we look at the data, and so I'm a, I'm a, um, I like to look at quantitative data, and I like to look at research just to be able to be like conscious of like different things and um, trends that are happening. And can you like, identify yourself because the people keep asking, "Who's this talking?" So Ari, it's Lexus Exodus. <laughs> okay. I know some of you guys recognize my voice, but it's Lexus Exodus. So no, so these men, if you look at the data, they leave the felony conviction rates. So they also lead the poverty rates. They have very high domestic violence rates. Um, They have very low marriage rates, but all of these illegitimate children everywhere. And um, also I I follow another content creator and I I won't say her name because I want to respect her platform, but she counts every day how many stories that she comes across of black women and girls who have been victimized and who have lost their lives at the hands of these men. Oh, I think I featured that website on the show a couple of weeks ago. Oh, she's good. She's so good. And where the count, the last count this past week was 913 black women and girls who have lost their lives just in the States alone this year. And the studies show that all of this violence is intraracial, meaning that it happens at the hands of men that belong to these communities. I really do believe that we are so loyal that we will die behind this. 
Um, and it's, it's such a bizarre thing. It's such a really odd, weird thing. Like we'll see these stories every day. We'll see it within our community. I remember growing up in Blackistan and seeing like the neighbors fight and um, the next door neighbor every time, every Friday he'd get drunk and beat his wife. But for whatever reason, we're just in such a, a, a really um, extreme state of denial. I really do believe that it'll be the death of us. So that statement that you read, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Okay. <clears throat> so if he was able to hear that, um, the lady on there, Lexi, who was obviously popular in the divestment community, and I see some of y'all in the chat, and I'm going to put the link up because, again, I welcome everyone on here. So if I'm getting something wrong, someone said I need to do a little bit more research, I'm letting you talk. So there's no research that I necessarily have to do. I'm just playing what you guys are saying and just read and saying it verbatim. So what this lady said is that she's into stats and she's saying that it's, you know, we are going to love the black men to our detriment because they're killing us. Now I'm going to say this <clears throat> and some of y'all black men might get um, upset, but it is what it is. Again, equal smoke. The extreme... The extremities that I hear on this side is the exact same shit that I hear on this side as well, too. The extreme of the passport bros, the ones that say there's no good uh, black women, what, what's up, fresh and fit? How are they, fresh and fit, different from these women? They're not. It's two extremes. And again, like I said at the beginning, if if I'm wanting to be kind of the link that link us shit together, we have to call, we got to call a spade a spade. When we hear that on this side, it gives reverence to these women to say the exact same thing, just flip it. So therefore, it's the Black men that are making single parents. They're leaving us. It's not the Black woman's fault. It's the Black men that are getting women pregnant and running off. It's the Pookie and Ray Rays. And you Black men won't do anything with the Pookie and Ray Rays. Just like you tell us, we don't do anything with the Tatianas. It's the same rhetoric that we hear from hurt men. Now we get to hear from the hurt women. They just call themselves divesters. Let's carry on. Before I play this, um, let me pop back up. That was interesting too, because throughout um, this stream, it was very, very apparent that it was self, self, self. They all, everyone kept saying, love yourself first. Self-love, self-love. Being African Methodist Episcopal here in the South, what my Bible teaches me is that um, we don't do selfless stuff, selfish. When you love, you give yourself to that person. What kind of mother would I be if I just think of myself only? What kind of spouse, what kind of lover, what kind of mate would I be if I just think of myself? What kind of worker would I be if I just think of myself? What kind of friend would I be if I just think of myself? The self, the self worship of it all to me is disgusting. Giving yourself, that's love. I wonder, because everybody kept me, are you married? Are you married? Are these women married? Funny enough, if you watch this, they actually all said on here that they don't even want to be married. I don't really think they have a choice, but let's carry on. Um, they talk a lot about isolation, which I think is interesting, too. Man, let me pop back up. <laughs> Ooh, some of y'all had me good and heated. So they talk about self um, isolation. And this is what I want to play um, a part where they said that they couldn't even they had to leave their families because their families just didn't understand. And I had to let go of my friends and I'm walking this divestment 
walk alone. Now, I got people in my family that, honey, got a little white lady. My daddy, bless his heart, hit my, my stepmother was a white lady. And I loved her as much as I loved him. He still had his family. He still had his children. She's now gone to glory. Rest her, rest her soul. Dating out doesn't mean that you're alone. So it's, it's something else that's there. There's many of people that date outside their race and their family still loves them and the children that, they're ba that they bear are still loved. So the fact that these women are saying that they are alone and isolated and they had to leave, physically leave their family. One of the women on here left her home and went to a whole nother um, state to love white men. It, the math ain't mathing. I'll play it. Let's see. That's real. That's good. Okay, anyone else want to chime in on that? You know, what's the pros for, for Black women and girls of domestic? But then, you know, just to be fair, we have to also consider that there may be a down, you know, downside to this. I think one of the pros is that you make a choice to put yourself first. And I think that that's something that Black women just don't know how to do. Um, I think that... Um, you know, I, I'm going to go to the, to the cons real quick, right? Like, I, I I don't have the relationship that I would like with family, with friends. People find me to be a radical, okay? Um, I, I'm 24-7 with it. You know, I'm 24-7 with it. I got pamphlets. I got, you know, what you need. Like, we're talking about the, the issues. We're discussing the issues. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me. She's going to go on a rampage. But the lady says she got pamphlets. What is she doing? Cancer research? She has pamphlets on divesting and being disposing of black men and pamphlets? Who the hell has pamphlets about dating? It's just if you the math ain't math is not making sense to me. How do you have pamphlets and going to Thanksgiving dinners talking about you loving black men, you not loving black men and wanting a white man? Girl, just do it, girl. Black men, fresh and fit. Don't nobody care. The, uh, the bon quiches and get you, just get yourself a little white lady and go on about your business. The lady said she has pamphlets. Oh, man, I wish I would have. If I was really prepared for this show, and the reason why I'm doing it is because it was rude ass comments. But if I was prepared, I sure enough would have asked this little lady, girl, give me a little pamphlet, girl. Let me read this how to pamphlets or something. But I digress. Issues. And people just want to relax and chill. They don't want to hear about breaking generational curses on Thanksgiving Day. You know what I'm saying? So I think, just like Asia said, um, I think black sheep as well. And that's. I've, I've learned that that's going to be a part of my journey and it doesn't hurt so much anymore. And if you're not willing to be strong and, and face the fact that this is going to isolate you, you can't talk about divestment and you're chilling with everybody and you're chilling with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because at some point you're going to have to step away and, and put yourself first. Everyone's going to play you when you're a black woman. That's what I learned the hard way. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's going to try you. Everyone. And it, it's very sad. I've had to, you know, be very strong with, you know, with strangers. You know, people are like, whoa, why are you coming so aggressive? I'm like, I'm healing. You know, I, you know, I got to put myself first. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm up, you'll come up crazy a little. But, but it's, I think it's a blessing in the end because we teach people how to treat us. And I will no longer let people think that treating me subpar is the way that it's going to go. That's just not going to happen. Okay, let me. I want to hear from Danny. She's been. The lady that I had on the show last week, conservative black woman, said that when black women divest, 
they are the happiest. They are the happiest. That woman that just was screaming. Let me alone. I want my white man. To hell with them black nigga. What? And that was all the bass in her voice. I didn't know she was about to do some Johnny Gill. My, my, my. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was just, come on, lady. You don't sound happy at all. Look, look at the ladies. Does this look like happy to you? Look, well, so, so, I mean, she, she looked like she got the COVID. Her, a child can't hardly see her over here in the corner. It don't. These are not the faces that I see of happy women. So again. It's not the men. It's not the men. What is it about you? Her tone, the aggression. She even said, I know I sound aggressive. I sound like I've been smoking a pack of Newports. Oh, white men, I love you. That's not happy. She sounds rough, used up. So what do these women say when they're they're asked, well, what about the good black men? You can't possibly think that there ain't, ain't no good black men. You can't think that. Now, I know it's some rough ones. You know, y'all, they call them dusties. I would love to know why. Because I'm not going to say that. But what do they say about that? Let me see. Whenever we tend to have a, you know, really honest discussion about the behaviors of black men toward black women and girls, there's always that at least one person who's going to come up with, why you say that? What about the good black men? You know, my daddy, my brother. My husband, my boyfriend, my son, my cousin, my goldfish is not like that. You guys just know. One second, because I am with the smoke today. And I see a comment on here, Miss Price, Miss Pace, excuse me. Why haven't a good man married you, Courtney? Because your daddy taking too long. I think he got a problem with me with you calling me mama since you older than me. But we're going to work on that. Tell your daddy I said I'm going to call him when I get off this thing, okay? Let's carry on. You know, bad guy. You picked them. And this actually can come from me and our women. What is your response to people with that mentality who say those kinds of things in response to the, the cry to divest. Yeah, you know, you've heard it. Y'all know you've heard it. You, I mean, you just, that's all they say. They always, you know, what about the good black man? You know, there's good well, black men. It, 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 oh, I like you go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I can answer that too. <laughs> when I hear that, you know, I tell them, this is what I tell them. It's like, okay, so if you're a good black man, then, you know, why are you letting the Rayways and Pookies and these, these, Degenerates in the community terrorize the community, terrorize the black women, leave them pregnant. You know, no marriage. If you're such a good man, then why aren't you doing anything about it? Instead, you left or you turned blind eyes. So for me, you're not a good man. You're just as bad as they are. So that's what I tell them. That's Girl, you must them. be my twin. Can I, <laughs> can I say? Can I say a lot of the people that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You should speak. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'm gonna make oh, this. Oh, oh. Yeah. I. I have a perfect analogy for this. Um, and I was thinking about the other day about situations that I've been in. As far as people saying, oh, well, what about the good black men, you know, X, Y, and Z. Here's my analogy for that. Say you have a pack of M&Ms, right? Regular, not the peanut kind. You have the regular bag of M&Ms. And let's say, however many pieces come in the bag of M&Ms. 
10 of them are poison. They look, smell, and taste just like the rest of them. You can't tell which ones are poison. Are you going to pick through each one and snip and lick and taste and try to figure out which one is or isn't poison? Or is it safer to just kind of set the whole pack aside and not deal with it? You know, that's how I felt about it recently. And there ain't never lying. just one Eminem either. That Eminem exactly. got poisonous as friends. <laughs> oh my God. So we liken people, black men to M&Ms. Lady, people are bad. Black men, white men, Asian men, all of them damn near got some trifling in them. But you know what? I hear that every day over here. I am constantly having to tell black men there's still good black women. I am constantly having to tell black men over here, quit putting black women all as if we're all the same. I have nothing in common with these ladies. We're all black women. I am not them. They are not me. We're all different. It's not a pander. It's not nothing. It's facts. Take some water. Because I feel like it's going to be smoking tonight. I saw someone in the comments saying it's a response. Is a response. Well, the response is trash. It's trash. If this is what you're responding to ignorance of men saying the dumb shit that they're saying, it's trash. When do you fight fire with fire? It just burns more. You don't let out a fire but put more smoke and fire to it. It's the dumbest shit that I've ever heard. Like, how old are we? How old are we? Well, it's a response. They're not being nice to us black women, so I'm going to be mean to them. Every black man don't think like that, just like every black woman doesn't think like this. But I'm calling it out because on both ends, it's dumb as hell. So I watched this today. <clears throat> Thoroughly entertained um, by the ladies. Again, do I hear some of the stuff that they say on our end? I do. I was watching uh, Tommy what, Sotomayor yesterday. The foolishness that came out of his mouth about black women. We are not the same. Just like there's trash white men, it's trash black men. But there's also good white men. It's also good black men. Damn, find you one that's good for you. It, it, the fact that I have to have this conversation, though. Like, how how old are we? We damn, we over here middle-aged people thinking that all black men and all black women are the same. 